to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The word of God says, Great peace comes to those who love your law. Psalm 119, verse 165. We welcome you again to our second part in our study of the peace of God. We hope that you'll take your Bible and have that ready as we're going to study together today about the marvelous subject of God's peace. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at 1-855-855. 458 3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. Friend, as we think about the peace of God and how that peace is obtained in the Christian's life or is initially attained and maintained in the Christian's life, we need to realize that God's peace is directly tied to the gospel and to the Word of God. We ask the question, how is peace obtained? And friend, peace comes to those who love God's law. Listen again to Psalm 119, verse 165. The beautiful words of the psalmist here illustrate the connection between peace and God's Word. The Bible says, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. How do I obtain God's peace, that that great peace in my life? Friend, I need to have a love For the law of God. In fact, in that same chapter, Psalm 119, the psalmist will say, How I love your law is my meditation all the day. I want to have, to have peace. I've got to have God's word in my life. If the gospel is the message of peace, and it is, if Jesus is the way of peace, and he is, then friend, I want to obtain those in my life by living according to the Word of God. Now, such a practical principle here, and it's a very important one for each of us. To have the peace of God, that great peace in my life, I've got to know the Word of God, meaning that I've got to search it. Acts 17, 11, I've got to search the Scriptures daily. I've got to study it regularly. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, I need to read and meditate upon the Word of God Often, 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, and I want to have that in my heart. Hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against him. Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12. And so to obtain this peace, let's have a love for the word of God by making it a regular part of each and every one of our lives. Friend, we also know that God's peace from the scripture is obtained 
by that justification that faith in Christ brings. Justification of faith helps me to bring that peace of God into our lives. Now, when we say justification of faith, I understand that's a, that's a big word, but the word justified means just as if I'd never sinned. And faith is that word which means a, an obedient trust in Almighty God. And so when, by the justification of faith, we're talking about the process of obeying the gospel and becoming a Christian brings faith and brings peace into my life. Listen to Romans 5, verse number 1. Paul says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification by obedience to the gospel system of faith. Romans 1, 16 and 17, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes. Just as, as it is written, the just shall live or be saved by faith. Faith in the system of it in Christ brings justification. And so, friend, if I'm going to have that peace and obtain it, I again must be obedient to the gospel message and system that God has laid out. Let's also realize this, and it's directly tied to the previous point. Forgiveness of sins brings peace beyond measure in my life and yours. I want you to notice the words of Luke chapter 7. Jesus is here talking to a woman who has actually put her faith into action and has shown that to Christ. And here's what Jesus says to that woman in Luke 7 verse 50. Then he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Friend, when you think about true peace in your life, and I think about true peace in mine, that which brings heartache. That which wrecks our lives, that which, uh, as it were, suffocates us, is sin. The psalmist said in Psalm 38, verse 4, My sins have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They're too heavy for me to bear. I can't hardly bear the weight of sin, nor can anyone who's trying to please God and do godly things. Forgiveness of that sin brings peace. In our lives, as Jesus said to this wonderful woman who put her faith in him, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You know, it's wonderful when we look at examples in the Bible where people obey the gospel. Like in Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch hears the message of Philip. He, He realizes he must obey that. He obeys the message and the Bible says he came up out of the water rejoicing. What made that man so happy and gave him a a new outlook in life? The peace of God that came through forgiveness of sins found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, friend, if you're going to have that peace, you must submit to what Jesus said in obedience to the gospel to have your sins forgiven. You know, Jesus didn't make it hard. He didn't beat around the bush and he didn't mince words about how to be saved. Listen to the words of Jesus. In Mark 16, verse 16, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. To be saved, Jesus said, you've got to believe and be baptized. When one does what the Scripture says in obedience to that, he can have that peace in his life. Acts 22, verse 16, Saul of Tarsus was told by Ananias, Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling On the name of the Lord. When one's sins are removed in obedience to the gospel, what a sense of peace he can have in his life. Do you remember maybe when you obeyed the gospel? How good it felt to know I have done what God says. I have access to that forgiveness by the grace and mercy of God and that sense of peace that overtook your life at that time. How else is peace obtained? Friend, peace and joy comes after conversion and obedience to the gospel. And and we give you this example. Here's an example of peace after conversion. I want you to notice Acts chapter 8. We mentioned this uh, shortly a a while ago, but I want you to notice Acts 8 verse 41 with me. The Bible says, As Philip, the Ethiopian eunuch, came up out of the water, the Scripture records this. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. What made that that eunuch so happy? What brought that sense of, of joy and happiness and peace into his life? 
this man's obedience to the gospel and knowing he now has access to the blood of Christ that Isaiah 53 spoke about. He was reading about that passage in Isaiah 53. He was led as a lamb before it shears the silent, and so he opened not his mouth. And he says, who's this talking about? Himself? Or this prophet talking about himself or some man? And from that point, Philip went on to preach Jesus to him. The message of salvation, the message of hope, a message of peace between God and man, and he gets that message. Here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? If you believe with all your heart, you may. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. They stop the chariot. They both get down out of the chariot. They both go down to the water. He baptizes him, and he comes up out of the water, and he goes on his way rejoicing. This man now had peace that was obtained by obedience to the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what a, what a beautiful picture that is of the hope and serenity that now existed in that man's life. And friend, here's the powerful message. Every person today who's willing to, to take their Bible, who's willing to read it and study it, and, and who says to themselves, I'm going to do just like they did in the Bible. I'm going to obey the gospel just like they did on Pentecost. I'm going to obey the gospel just like the Ethiopian eunuch did, just like they did in other passages. I'm just going to simply do what they did. Friend, there's an assurance, there's a security, and there's most definitely a peace, the peace of God, that comes from obedience to that wonderful message of salvation in Christ. Let's now turn our attention to another question. And, and this is such a significant question because once I know what the peace of God is and its attributes, its characteristics, I most definitely want that in my life. Once I learn how it's obtained and I obey the gospel and I can, I can bring the peace of Christ into my life, another question now arises. How do I, for the rest of my life, maintain, keep that peace, make it a persistent part of my life, and make sure that I never lose the peace of God. Well, friend, let's realize this first of all. Peace and the continuation of it in our life is a lifelong pursuit for every Christian today. Notice the words of Romans chapter 14, verse number 19. Paul said, Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. I've got to pursue. I've got to strive after. I've got to always look after. I've always got to try in my life to have that peace. It, in my life and in yours, it is a constant pursuit to continue to maintain the peace of God in our lives. As we've said, Sin is what, that which brings conflict. Sin is that which brings enmity between God and man. And I've got to always be on the lookout for Satan and sin and that which strives to wreak havoc and discord in my life. And so make it a goal and make it an aim in this life. I want to do my best to pursue those things which make for peace and maintain that in my life. And then we suggest this from Scripture. For peace to really be maintained and attained in my life and yours, I need to be spiritually minded. And that ultimately is going to help bring peace in my life. Let me mention these passages to you from the Word of God, which teaches spiritual mindedness and peace go hand in hand. Listen to Romans 8 verse 6. Paul said, for to be carnally minded, and the word carnally represents that which is worldly, that which is ungodly, that which is sinful at times. For to be carnally minded is death. Now notice the contrast. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. When we talk about maintaining peace in our life, I've got to have the right mindset a spiritual mindset to maintain peace. Now, let me illustrate it in a way that I think each of us could understand. If I want to have chaos and confusion and, and discord in my life, all I've got to do is stop around and stop and look around at the world and all the problems it has. Turn the news on. Look at the chaos, crime, death, 
war and fighting that occurs in our world today, if I stopped and focused on the carnal, material, physical world here, my life would be an utter wreck. But, as Paul says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The Bible says in Colossians 3.1, If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. That's what it means to be spiritually minded. I'm seeking heaven. I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6.33, I'm thinking on things that are good and noble and holy and just and right. According to Philippians 4 verses 6 through 8, my outlook and my uplook are toward heaven itself and spiritual things, and that truly will bring peace into my life. Here's another passage that teaches that spiritual mindedness brings peace. Listen to Isaiah 26, verse number 3. You will keep him in perfect peace. How? Whose mind is stayed or focused on you because he trusts in you. How does that person obtain perfect peace from God? By having one's mind and spiritual outlook focused on God. Friend, do you want to have real peace? Do you want to maintain that in your life? Keep focusing on, keep seeking and keep striving after those things that are spiritual, that are heavenly, and that ultimately will bring glory in God, glory to Almighty God. Now, as we think about maintaining and continuing peace in our life, let's realize that a big part of maintaining peace in my life and yours is overcoming the biggest, probably, barrier in my life and yours to peace. What would you say one of the biggest barriers? to peace in our lives are? And I would say it's this, worry. If I'm going to have and maintain the peace of God in my life, I've got to learn to overcome worry. Paul, and by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, tied these two ideas together. I want you to listen to what Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7 says. The Apostle Paul said, Be anxious, or worry about nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now watch this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Notice the direct connection between not worrying about things and letting the peace of God rule in our hearts through prayer. I can make my request known to God. I know if I'm a child of God, God hears that He wants to help, that He knows what I need before I even ask. And because we serve a loving, kind, and merciful God who knows our needs far better than we do, I don't have to worry. I can ask God for His help. 1 Peter 5, 7 says it this way, Cast all your anxieties upon Him. He cares for you. Friend, if I'm going to have true peace in my life, listen carefully now, I've got to learn to overcome worry. You know, sometimes we, we get upset and we get troubled and we sit around and, and we just wring our hands and we, we don't know how things are going to work out and we don't know what's going to happen and what's going to come tomorrow and how am I going to deal with all these problems. Friend, I don't have to know how as long as I know who. Paul said, I know whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded He's able to keep that which I've committed to Him until that day. 2 Timothy chapter 1, about verses 10 through 15. And so let's realize, worry is the enemy of peace. Worry will suffocate and drain peace out of my body and my life spiritually quicker than we can ever begin to imagine. Now, here's another way that peace can be t maintained in my life and yours. The Bible teaches that obedience to God helps us to maintain absolute peace in our lives. Listen to these two passages that tie this idea together. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 9, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, watch this now, these do, and here's the consequence, the result. The peace of God will be with you. Learned, received, heard, saw in me. These do. And the peace of God, the God of peace, will be with you. 
how do I maintain God's peace in my life? By listening and having that desire and that willingness to continually obey the message of the gospel. Listen to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 about this idea. The wise Solomon said in Proverbs 3, verse 1, My son, do not forget my law. Rather, let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life. Now notice this, and peace they will add to you. Isn't it a wonderful thing? And It's not boastful. It's not bragging or anything like that. But isn't it wonderful to know I'm trying to walk in the light? 1 John 1 verse 7. I, I am honestly, to the best of my ability, trying to walk in the light. I'm doing my best to live according to the Bible. And although at my best I still realize I'm an unprofitable servant, Luke 17, 10, there's a certain amount of peace that comes from knowing we're trying to walk in the light. We're trying to do what God wants us to. We're giving our best effort. And that does indeed bring peace into our life. As the proverb writer and as Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 9. Now, here's another principle for maintaining that peace in our life. We must be faithful in the kingdom of God to maintain peace. Peace is directly connected to my working and to my faithfulness in God's kingdom. I want you to notice as we think about this idea, Romans chapter 14, verse 17. The scripture says, for the kingdom of God... It's not eating and drinking, but God's kingdom is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. If I'm actively pursuing the kingdom, if, as Jesus said, I am seeking first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, a natural outflowing from the kingdom is things like righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I can have those things in my life as I strive to seek first God and His kingdom in everything that I say and do. Here's another principle that's also very important for maintaining that peace in our life. We must realize that, that peace is maintained by those who strive to, uh, to do the good works God wants them to in this life. And friend, as we say good work, please understand we're not talking about anything that's going to merit me salvation. That's not the idea. But as we strive to work on behalf of God, there is a certain amount of peace that the Bible says is maintained in those people's lives. Here's the scripture. Romans chapter 2, verse number 10. The Bible says this, But glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Is there a certain amount of peace that comes from doing the good works God wants us to? Well, no doubt there is. Happiness, joy, peace, those things naturally come from obeying God, from following His commands, and the good and the joy that comes to others as we strive to help them and do good for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now friend, we also know from the Bible that peace is maintained by those who let the God of peace and the peace of God rule their lives. Listen to Colossians 3 verse 15. The Bible says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. What rules your life? You know, for some people it's sin. For others it's worry. To others, maybe they're ruled by pride. For the Christian, we need to let the peace of God rule our lives. I can have that peace. I can know God's on my side. I can know that all is well between man and God, between me and God. And because of that, I want to let God's peace rule in my life. Listen to another passage along those lines. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. The Word of God says this. Finally, brethren, Paul will say, farewell, be complete, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. I can live in peace because I now have peace with God and the hope and joy that every Christian wants to have. And friend, that peace that we have with God, the Bible says we also want to maintain that peace with other Christians. Listen to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 13. Be at peace among yourselves. 
Christians ought not to be at war and conflict and, and have problems with God and, and the things of this world. We ought to strive to be at peace with one another just as we are also at peace with God. Now, friend, we round things up today. We bring it to a conclusion and a climax by noting this. Peace of God, as we have noticed in these two lessons, is a wonderful attribute that every person ought to try to obtain. It's marvelous in what it can do in my life and yours, and, and it's available for every man, and I can continue to live that all the days of my life. But friend, realize this principle as well from the Scripture. The Bible teaches that the wicked, they will not have peace in this life or in the life to come. Here's what Isaiah said in Isaiah 48 verse 22. God says through Isaiah, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. What, what about those who have not obeyed the gospel? What about a person who's living in sin? What about a person whose heart is contrary to the will of God or, or somebody who has never known God? That person in sin and in wickedness cannot have God's peace. Listen to it again. There is no peace says the Lord, for the wicked. Friend, do you want the peace of God in your life? Most definitely you do. That peace can bring joy and happiness beyond measure. But to have that, one must turn from a life of sin and a life of wickedness and turn to God. Have you done that? Do you believe Jesus is God's Son? Are you willing to repent of things in your life that are contrary to the will of God? Would you confess the beautiful name of Jesus before men and to get into Christ where peace is? Would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Jesus said in John 3 verse 5, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We encourage you today to obtain this peace by obedience to the gospel. If you've not done that, we ask you kindly, why are you waiting? Don't, don't delay another day. Make sure that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding is in your heart and your life today by obedience to and a continuation in the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We hope and pray that you'll do those things without hesitation. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.